How's it going, everybody? About a month ago, I showed you my everyday carry ham radio kit, something that either goes in my pockets where I'm carrying a radio or like a chest rig. And I appreciate that's not for everybody. So today I'm gonna to be showing you this. This is my Daylight Plus from Osprey. Yes, this comes in more colors than kind of this audacious color pattern that I went with. Links for all this stuff will be in the video description and most of it is available on Amazon aside from the amateur radio stuff. So let's dive into this because it's gonna take me a little while to get all the way through everything here. So Start starting off on the outside of my bag here, I have a Thermalworks teardrop thermometer. Uh, this one will actually change depending on the orientation you're holding it and it'll last for about 167 days on one coin cell battery. The cool thing about this is even though it's saying in the studio it's 84 degrees right now, if I hold this down for a couple of seconds, you'll see the max was 97 and the lowest was 57 that it's experienced in the last a uh, couple of days. So that's pretty cool. You can kind of use this to keep track of what the temperature's like when you're outside. I know a lot of people will throw this on the back of their backpacking camping rig and they'll use that to kind of get an idea of how cold things got during the day. On the outside I have a Brunton glow in the dark compass. This is mainly kind of like a glow indicator more than anything, but sure it's effective. And a screw gate to keep it all on. Next to it, of course, I've got to have my s beaner and an s beaner is just a fantastic little thing to have on you at all times these are available on amazon they're sold in like lots of of six or more incredibly handy you should have at least one on every one of your bags on the outside pocket there are three pockets to this bag i have a card computer from m5 this one is actually running a special bootloader called m5 launch these things are incredibly inexpensive and they're really, really fun. This allows you to load up firmware on an SD card on the outside and you can just change things out as you go, which is a really handy thing. Card computers are probably not for everybody, but uh, if you like to tinker around with stuff, particularly technology, then uh, you probably are interested in something like this. Uh, a camera thing, which I need this, you probably don't. I have a bunch of these Freewell ND filters of various types and actually there's a, a, a mist filter right here as well to go along with it as well as uh, some uh, variable ND filters for my Osmo Pocket 3 which has become my, my primary camera of, of choice. This outside pocket is roughly about a hands width deep here which is not so bad. I also carry some wipes in here as well which are handy for lenses, screens of radios, and the rest of the nine yards there. All right, sliding this down a little bit, there are two standard zipper poles. This is the main body pole, and this is the kind of an admin pouch pole. Now in here, I have a ton of different stuff, so I'll just kind of pull this down as far as I can, and it ends also about one hand down about, right, as far as that goes into the end there. I have a little 3D printed case for business cards. You may or may not need this. Or eyeball QSO cards. Why not? Have something like that along for the ride. I have an extra antenna. This is a Signal Stuff Signal Stick, which I keep in my bag. This is BNC. Of course it is. A ABC Almond Butter Cocoa Bar from Trader Joe's. Always good to have snacks. Particularly when you have kids. You're always going to need something like that. This is called a ditty bag, and a ditty bag is simply little handy things that you might need throughout the day, or if you end up being somewhere a little bit longer than you expected. This has a big lighter in it, a small container of Vaseline, which is sometimes useful for fire starting as well as a skin protectant. A really tiny toothbrush from Garage Made Gear. These guys are pretty cool. Look how small that is. Anyway, nice to have in the kit. These are chewable toothpaste. I sometimes like to brush my teeth after meals and sometimes I'm eating on the road if I'm doing a Parks on the Air, so it's nice to have a bit of freshness there. And then the remainder, oh buddy, uh, sometimes I eat food that when I wake up in the morning, I have a bit of indigestion and also a bit of pain from my, uh, from maybe my ham radio hiking the day before. So I always carry Alka-Seltzers. These are nice too because my kids generally don't like swallowing pills. They're uh, kind of of that age that they're not really they're not really into swallowing pills, so I like to keep Alka-Seltzer on me. I have a BOGO tie. These are also very useful when I'm not using tomato wire, but that's usually the option that I look for the most is tomato wire. Here is a simple Wilderness Protocol Simplex Frequencies card. Breaks down what the Wilderness uh, 
protocol is and then a handy checklist of items. I can go through here and check them off as I find them or at least do it in my head and I can have a clear understanding that I have at least the bare minimum for what I might be doing for parks on the air or summits on the air or whatever. So good thing to keep an eye on. Now this is a frivolous item, but something that uh, I think is pretty cool. It's likely overkill for most people, but some of you may like to keep some magnification on you. And this is a Pentax FB10 pocket binocular. And uh, they're quite cool. So you adjust this out for focus and yeah, these are these are pretty fun actually. Not the most magnification, and yeah, you just adjust them for your eyes by sliding them in and out. But they're they're pretty cool. These are 10 to 18, and they are made in Japan. They are pretty rare now. In fact, I I got these off of eBay quite a while ago, and I actually need to open them up because they don't close all the way like they should. That should be uh, totally seamless there. But anyway, a cool thing to have in your kit, but probably definitely overkill. You can find. Probably better binoculars, slightly a little bit bigger than this, that might fit the bill for you. All right, next to that is a Buddy. These are adapters for USB-C. So this is a USB-C jumper on the outside. And you pull this out. And you add these bits to it. So you get a USB-A, a USB micro, a lightning, or you can plug it in here, and it is a, a TF card reader, as well as being a place to hold TF cards or SSD cards, and that's nice to have on you as well. So that's something that's kind of cool. It's a little big for what it is, but it's uh, telescoping down, or it slides into itself, which makes it a little bit more packable, which I find to be pretty useful. And if you don't have a card reader on your laptop for some reason, or you need to just copy stuff over. That works great for card reading videos or anything you've done during the day. Next to that, a very important item, my Anker 10,000 milliamp hour or power delivery, I always forget, uh, battery. This has a USB-C and a USB-A and I always like to keep the tether on it. I can run my amateur radios off of these and I have actually done a video on that, at least for QRP, it works great. Now to go along with that, I have this little Tom Bin handy pouch with a clip on it. So if you open this guy up, I have my Tooftalin power delivery out, USB-C out, and it'll take a 12 volt in. So this is a converter for 12 volt power down to the correct amps for USB-C. So you won't blow up your electronics. And I have the reverse of that too, which is what's really, really handy for amateur radio. This will take in USB-C charge bank and it'll bump it up to 12 volts for running a QRP radio, which is exactly uh, what I do with it. I have done and it works great. And considering how small this is, it's an absolute winner. So check out Tooftalin. I will post the link in the description for that. And of course, a USB-C cable with removable USB-A head. And yes, my BB link for doing packet radio on my iPhone. This is just for the iPhone. It is not something that's needed for you Android users. If you have a D75 or D74, you can just go ahead and skip this and just go natively, which is a lot nicer. But anyway, I keep this with me to make sure I'm never without the capability of trying to connect to a WinLink node. There's a tether on this backpack and this is totally overkill, but still kind of cool. Mm, some of you may find this interesting. This is actually a little handcuff key. You know, you and the missus. No, I shouldn't go any further than that. But let's say for some reason you find yourself handcuffed and you don't know why and you need to get loose. Well, they <laughs> make little handcuff keys. And I threw this on there. It was a novelty that I got not too long ago. And I figured, what the heck, we'll leave it on there. Why would I need that? I don't know. But hey, it's nice to be prepared and it weighs almost nothing. All right, flipping that closed. I will note that there is kind of a garment storage here on this backpack. If you unclip the sides here and here, there is a pocket on the top, or at least a front-loading pocket that you can throw in a sweater or jacket and then you can cinch it down. To be honest, I find this is pretty overkill and this would be the least happy I am about this bag. Uh, is that it's there because it actually gets in the way of the zippers. Once you clip this into place, which you'll see, the zippers can't pass by without uh, you coming and going in here or pulling this down or, or whatever. So it's, it's not actually that great. In fact, uh, that's the only thing about this backpack I'm not really in love with. 
Since we're talking about the backpack, let me note something that's really, really nice for an EDC bag like this is that these pockets go all the way down here on the outside. So let me grab my Owala bottle. And yeah, I can take my Owala and shove it all the way down in there. And it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty nicely secured. And if I want to, I could clip my clip on top of that or feed it through the handle. And it's, it's really not going anywhere. Now, this is being impeded a little bit by some of the PAX stuff that's inside the main body, but you can sometimes get it even deeper than that, depending on how you pack your bag. Before we get into the main compartment, I will wrap up the bag talk anyway by talking about the back. This has an airscape backing, which raises up and provides vents on your back when you're walking, and I find that I'm a lot less sweaty as I'm hiking around when I have this on. There is a chest strap that has a whistle on the clip, and I've added a Gossamer Gear large cell phone accessory pouch to the side, which I have a USB-C to USB-C cable for charging if I need to. And inside is where my D75 lives with its signal stuff signal stick. So yeah, I have a backup antenna as well if I need it, or I can just use that on something else. And the D75 is the radio that rolls with me because it's got USB-C. So I can just keep this charged while I'm on the go. These are really, really good for cameras too. They actually have a smaller sized one, which I put my, my Ricoh GR camera in. It's, eh, it's about three fourths the size of this and it's perfectly fit for that GR camera, which is nice because I really do like to use a good camera for stills if I can when I'm out in the field. The main pouch, let's go ahead and open this guy up. Again, I've got to slide my zippers through here. Okay, we're good. I do have this packed up pretty tightly and we've got some redundancies in here that I normally wouldn't keep. The first thing right on top is my foldable travel hat with clip. And this is nice because you can just remove it, put it on your belt or on your backpack to dry if it got, if it gets wet. Very light, very packable, really great. Next to that is the shell case for my Osmo Pocket 3, which usually lives in this handy go bag. This came with the creator kit for the Osmo, but I keep the hard shell in the backpack because that usually is when I most need a quick camera that I can just grab when I'm out in the field. And it slides in like that and then it can go in my, my Gossamer gear pouch or in my pocket and it helps protect the camera when I'm out and about. Otherwise it lives in the DJI bag, which also goes inside this backpack, but I wanted to show you a little bit more radio options. So I threw some more stuff in here just to give you an example of what you can fit. Now, if I didn't have this so packed with radio stuff, um, you could get a full set of clothes. You can get some extra food in here as well, but let's pull this out. Yes, this has been riding in here this whole time. This is the Explorer Carbon 20. This is the K8 MRD ham radio tube special with the modified tether for the handle. I just drilled a hole and used a washer in the cap and some gaffers tape here to secure a knotted piece of Dacron line. This is a great mast and it can live in this bag full time and be completely closed within. Oh, an expensive overkill item, but something that if you are me <laughs> or like me, you may need. This is a Nemo folding chair and uh, it's incredibly light. The Moonlight Elite is the chair and I take this pretty much everywhere with me. Why I like the Moonlight Elite is that this is actually the, the base platform that the chair sits on. So instead of sitting on one of those small, tiny pack chairs and the legs go through the sand or through the dirt or the mud and you sink in along with it until your butt is on the ground, this gives you a wide flat path platform where the legs actually fit in these little side pockets, which allow you to stay above ground. The chair folds on the inside. It's held in place by bungees and you can just go ahead and wrap it up like so, and it locks into place, kind of. This has been riding in my backpack now for a little while, and I note that this toggle does come loose every now and then, so keep that in mind. In the back is a hydration pouch with a clip that will hold your hydration pouch up if you need to do that. This is a, and then there is a pass-through in the back here to allow you to feed the straw through. In that spot though, I am holding my gateway Jankopotamus Mark II. This is a GWTN116-3BK. This is basically the same 
laptop as the maestro of all three, but for some reason it just performs better. I don't know how to explain it other than, oh, it looks like I'm missing a screw too right there. Interesting. The keyboard is nicer. It doesn't have this plastic flexy bit like the, uh, like the maestro does. It's just a better laptop for what I do most of the time. And I, I don't really know why I feel that way because I think that's totally biased by, I don't know, maybe HP. My, my background in HP, I've, I've generally not had a horrible time with them like I've had horrible times with Dell, but you get the idea. In the laptop pocket as well, I have the Smiley one half wave vertical two meter antenna. This is a great antenna if you are going to be running two meters, two meter simplex, going out, possibly doing a summits on the air from a summit. This antenna is the one I always keep in a backpack that I can switch to when I get to the summit and it makes it really nice and really portable. Don't leave this on your radio though. Uh, you will likely break your radio. Next item is a Tom Bin cubelet, tiny cubelet with a little tether on the side. Inside here is a whole number of things, but a GPS dongle for receiving GPS, which is really nice for timekeeping. My laptop is set up with a GPS application, which will allow you to get time without much problem. A death cable, <laughs> a coaxial DC to coaxial DC cable. A USB-A to USB-B and an adapter for USB-C for connecting my QRP Labs QDX digital transceiver. This is an FT8 or JSA call only radio and its little battery buddy is riding on top. And I can take this into the field and I can do FT8 and JSA call things for hours and hours and hours and not have any problem if I'm using an antenna such as the K6 ARK portable antenna, which works great for just about everything uh, I would need to do as far as digital is concerned. If you wanna do single sideband or CW, then this is not the setup for you. You need to go with something a little bit different. I keep a cat tourniquet also in my bag next to my first aid kit. And yeah, it's loose right now. I don't have a dedicated trauma pouch, but that's something that I will likely be picking up that can affix to the side of the bag somewhere. So this is quick to grab. And yes, it's pre set up for going around a leg, a leg about the size of mine, uh, if I were to need it, which you know, you hope you don't do, but you prepare for the worst. Next radio, and by the way, this the whole thought here is that you could pick one of these things and carry it with you. Have your VHF, UHF, and then maybe have an HF option. So what I've been carrying, because a lot of this is just me time radio, this is when I'm out with the family and we might be doing a special event or we're going to a soccer game or we went to the 4th of July city event. I had this backpack and this radio with me and I was trying to do some CW while bands were playing in the background for the 4th of July event and I tried to chase a couple of potas. Tried is the optimal word, but uh, we still had fun regardless. I do have a couple of Tuftalin items that I am testing. This is the flat table mount for the KH-1, and this is the 45 degree angle antenna mount for the KH-1. And those can just live right in there. If you'd like to know more about the Elecraft KH-1, take a look in the video description for my videos where we went through some of its features and uses live here on YouTube. I have a remove before soda flag that lives with the KH-1. And in the upper zippered pouch, we have some earbuds and then an assortment of keys. I, I've been blessed to be able to pick up a couple of keys that I'm also playing around with uh, as kind of an experiment. So I've got the K6 ARK touch key. I have the stock or a stock upgraded Elecraft key. And then I have the the N6 ARA Tiny Paddle, which you can see there, uh, which these all work great with the KH-1, and I've been playing with them to figure out which one I like most. And they're all unique enough that I, I think they probably deserve a little bit of time on this channel. Of course, I'm not the best CW operator, but I certainly can figure out what I like and what I don't like. With that said, they're, they've all been pretty good, so it's really going to come down to personal feel. I like to carry a 
Stuff sack of some kind. This is another Tom Bin item. Stuff sacks are fun because you can throw dirty clothes. Uh, you know, you got kids, maybe they get muddy, or maybe they are just wet clothes. Maybe it's something that you just want to put in a bag and keep it sequestered from the rest of your stuff, but you don't really want to get rid of it. So you can throw it in the stuff sack, and then on the outside, you can tether it with your S clip or your screw down clip, or just clip it to the side with the clips here. There's a myriad uses uh, for a stuff sack. Sometimes I'll carry a foldable tote bag as well, and those have been really helpful. One of the last items that usually lives in the bottom here is a buff, and this is just a big merino wool tube that you can put around your neck, over your head, over your eyes, which is what I usually do when I'm sleeping. I'll throw one of these over my eyes, and that gives me some sanity when I'm trying to get some shut eye, and I'm in an area where it's either really bright because it's a full moon, or I want to sleep in later than sunrise and my tent isn't that dark inside of it, I'll use the buff for this. Now, usually this rides at the top, but uh, while I was packing this bag or repacking it, it sunk to the bottom. This is my refuge medical training personal first aid kit. And if you'd like to see more on this, you can check out the video that I did with K6ARK and W6RIP out at Thomas Mountain, where we went through not only the portable first aid kit but also their base station first aid kit and i gotta say i have uh, i have used this thing quite a few times uh for splinter removals for kids not my kids although i've used it for my kids as well uh kid got his eye gashed at a pool party and this came out and was able to help out at least to stop the bleeding and you know kind of get some assistance going before the kid could go to the hospital or the doctor or urgent care and get stitched up or whatever they did. I don't know. Again, not my kid. Anyway, that Refuge Medical. Link will be in the description for everything so you can check this out. I think there's, yeah, two more items before we wrap up. A Dave's Killer Bread Trail Mix Crumble and a Matador blanket and this is particularly a ground cover which is kind of nice when you're out in the field you can throw this on the ground and get up off the dirt for a little while and then fold it back up and then maybe put it in your stuff sack until you can wash it or clean it now overall this osprey bag is probably one of the better ones that i've picked up and carried before that i had a patagonia which uh, didn't have water bottle pockets but it had the straps that i like for carrying all day this is the perfect size that fits my back about perfect you know top to bottom doesn't go below my hip line or anything like that for a day pack and the straps are not nearly as padded but there are this airscape material which makes them like really fast to dry and they breathe really well so it's worked out really well for about the four hours of carrying that i've had to do when using this pack and it's been fine for that the big pockets on the side that are elastic are really really helpful and everything about it has been good except for this middle flappy pocket bit. Now, some of that is, is when I'm usually traveling around in the summer, I don't have an outer layer. I will have it packed inside the bag or I won't need like a rain jacket. But as we get into fall and winter, there are plenty of times where I have multiple outer garments and then a rain jacket. And this is probably great for stuffing a rain jacket into and then cinching it down or just whatever random stuff you've picked up along the way with shopping and you need some place to hold it. Most likely my kids and their jacket when they get too hot and they need dad to carry it. Now, something that you can carry as well is this low pro case that I found out about from Adam K6ARK. This is what carries my KX2. I've talked about this in some other videos. You can swap out the radios and you can run this if you wanted to. This is probably about the biggest radio I'd carry or the 705 in that Condor hydration pouch. But you will have to make some sacrifices. You might need to take out the chair, for instance, which is fine for a lot of people or replace it with one of those inflatable sit mats or I don't know, just sit on the ground. You could always do that. Anyway, that's in another video. I will link to that as well. So you guys will have an idea of what that's all about. Okay, last but not least, let's... uh go ahead and do a weight test on this bad boy right about 13 pounds just a little shy of 13 pounds with everything in it which for me is a no problem carry all day and yes that does not include my water bottle which will increase the weight some but by and large a nice little pack setup that i'm pretty happy with so far so if this changes i'll let you know it'll probably be an upgrade to the pack but 
So far, I've been really happy with it, and uh, I'm curious, what do you think? So post your comments below, maybe tell me what you use. Go ahead, go the full list of it, tell me what pack you're really liking and why you like your pack. That's the thing with packs is that they're highly personal and there's things and gripes that people have that other people don't really share. So what works for me might not work for you. But some of the ideas of gear probably do and I'd like to hear about it in the video comments. So please drop them. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.